Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a regular meeting of the panel of utility commissioners and staff of the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority held today, Wednesday, December 8th at 10 a.m. by remote teleconference. My name is Chairman Marissa Gillette, and I'm joined virtually today by my colleagues, the Vice Chairman Jeff Pekoski and Commissioner Michael Karen. We have a regular calendar and a consent calendar in front of us today, uh, three items on the regular calendar. We'll turn first to, to docket number 210618. Peer's review of the placement of a utility poll by United Illuminating in a public right of way. Um, uh, and I will present the decision for the authority's consideration. Uh, so the authority uh, opened this docket pursuant to section 16234, subsection F of the General Statutes of Connecticut. Uh, so the United Illuminating uh, Company, or UI, uh, was requesting to relocate the electric service facilities from 78. Uncoa Place, Fairfield, Connecticut, to a new utility pole in the public right of way adjacent to 79 Uncoa Place. Uh, on June 23rd of 2020, the Town Plan and Zoning Commission uh, in the town of Fairfield voted to approve an application for the construction of a 26 unit residential building known as Fairfield Station Lofts at 78 Uncoa Place. Uh, the TPZ uh, decision required the applicant to demonstrate best efforts to relocate the existing utility lines that were along the frontage of the site. Municipal officials requested relocation of the utility lines because the overhead facilities would hinder uh, fire ladder access to the new building uh, and rooftop amenities. Um, as such, UI requested to re relocate the portion of overhead facilities in front of 78 Unqua to improve the emergency access uh, and in, um, uh, in response to that request, they wanted to relocate the electric service facilities to a new utility pole across the street in the public right away at 79 Uncoa Place. Uh, the owner of that property objected to the placement of the pole in the public right of way, um, although the objector did uh, concede that overhead wires need to be relocated for safety reasons. <clears throat> After attempts at mediation failed, the authority uh, convened this proceeding pursuant uh, to Connecticut General Statute 16234, subsection F. Uh, the legal standard by which the authority uh, evaluated this request was pursuant to that statute, um, which requires the utility risk to seek the approval of PURA um, uh, with an opportunity for a hearing uh, if an objection is received. Uh, so the authority evaluated whether the relocation was going to be to a public road, public highway, or uh, public ground. Uh, the authority also considered the public convenience and necessity as to, uh, with respect to the relocation of the pole for safety reasons. The authority also considered, um, in considering the abutting property owner's objections, the authority considered a number of alternative pole locations um, in the pole placement. <clears throat> Considering the objection and, and the alternatives, the authority concluded that the public right of way is part of the existing road and constitutes a public road within the meaning of uh, the applicable statute. Uh, the authority also found that public convenience and necessity require the relocation of the utility pole and electric facilities from 78 Uncoa Place to the uh, public right of way at 79 Uncoa Place. Therefore, uh, the decision approves the location of the utility pole as it has been uh, relocated in the public right of way. Uh, I would recommend this decision for the uh, panel's consideration. I move to Dr. Madam Chairman. Uh, second, Madam Chairman. Thank you. The decision has been regularly moved and seconded. If there are no questions or comments, I would ask Mr. Bumpton to please take the roll. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you, the item has been adopted. We'll turn to the second item on today's regular calendar, docket number 210628, the application of GenCon Energy LLC for establishment of the 2022 revenue requirements. We'll turn to authority staff, Ashley Lab, uh, Lab <laughs> Ashley, can you <laughs> pronounce your last name one more time for me, please? Labadia. Labadia, thank you. Ms. Labadia, can you please present the, um, the decision for the panel's consideration. Good morning, Chairman Gillette, Vice Chairman Bukowski, and Commissioner Karen. The Gen Con Devon and Gen Con Middletown peaking facilities began operation in June of 2010 and June 2011, respectively. 
The company is required to propose annually for authority review the revenue requirements to recover the projected capital costs operation and maintenance and administrative and general expenses for each peaking facility for the following calendar year. By application dated June 15, 2021, GenCon Energy LLC filed its application for the establishment of an annual fixed revenue requirement of $55.83 million. This revenue requirement consists of $25.17 million for GenCon Devon and $30.66 million for GenCon Middletown for the period commencing January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. On September 1st of 2021, GenCon revised its application and requested a total 2022 revenue requirement of $55.890 million. The amount the updated 2022 AFRR consists of 25.204 million for Gen Con Devon and 30.685 million for Gen Con Middletown. The authority held a public hearing in this matter via remote access on September 9th, 2021. In its review of GenCon's proposal, authority staff made necessary adjustments, which resulted in an $11.401 million reduction to the company's proposed 2022 total revenue requirement. The following items are included in this adjustment. The disallowance of $128,692 of the 2013 refinancing costs. This adjustment will align the unamortized debt cost balance with the remaining contract years for the peaking facilities. The mm -hmm. disallowance of $2.864 million of regulatory assets, assets, which is the disallowance from the 2021 AFRR decision, the disallowance of $6.144 million of excess return on capital, and the disallowance of $2.264 million of the proposed income tax expense associated with the company's net income. The above adjustments were necessary to align the company's proposal with proper rate-making principles and cost recovery. The reduction amount consists of $5.878 million for GenCon Devon and $5.523 million for GenCon Middletown. The staff recommends the approval of a total annual revenue requirement for GenCon Energy LLC of $44.489 million for the calendar year commencing January 1st, 2022 and ending December 31st, 2022. The 2022 allowed revenue consists of $19.326 million and $25.162 million for peaking generation facilities located at the Devon Station and the Middletown Station, respectively. In addition, the authority confirms Gen Con's proposed participation of these peaking units in the summer of 2022 and the winter 2022-2023 LFRM auctions and the upcoming FCA. I recommend the panel approve this decision. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion? I move with action. Second. Thank you. The decision has been regularly moved and seconded. If there are no questions or comments, I'll seek to take the roll, please. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. The decision has been adopted. We'll turn to the third item on today's regular calendar, docket number 210805, the annual review of the electric storage program, year one. We'll turn to authority staff, uh, Jake Reiner for a presentation of today's decision. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, today's decision, uh, the authority would approve with modification rules governing the statewide electric storage program available to all customers of the electric distribution companies, Eversource and United Illuminating, beginning January 1 of 2022. Uh, the rules were proposed by the EDCs and the Connecticut Green Bank, who together will act as program administrators. This decision <clears throat> follows the authority's July 28, 2021 decision in docket number 171203 RAO3, establishing the program pursuant to the authority's Equitable Modern Grid Initiative and Public Act 21-53, which directed PURA to establish the program to further the state's electric storage deployment goals. Uh, this nine-year program is structured around three-year program cycles with interim targets of 100 megawatts of storage by 2025, 300 by 
2028, and a final target of 580 megawatts of storage through 2030. The authority initiated this proceeding on August 4th of this year to review the program administrator's compliance with the authority's July 28th decision and subsequently received uh, the proposed program guidelines and associated documents on October 15th. Stakeholders proposed potential improvements to the proposed uh, program rules on or before November 2nd, which were further discussed at a technical meeting held on November 9th, and a final round of comments uh, was received on November 16th. The authority issued a, a proposed final decision on November 24th and received written exceptions on December 3rd. Today's decision builds on the authority's July 28th decision, which outlines program objectives to provide uh, multiple uh, benefits to the electric grid, provide a, a net uh, positive present value to all ratepayers, foster the sustained orderly development of a state-based electric storage industry, prioritize delivering increased resilience to historically underserved customers, lower the barriers to energy storage uh, for deployment in the state, maximize the long-term environmental benefits of electric storage, and also to maximize the benefits to ratepayers derived from the ISO New England wholesale capacity market. This decision, if adopted, would refine the program rules to more fully support the authority's objectives and improve a final incentive structure for the first three-year program cycle. Specifically, today's decision would approve final upfront incentives administered by the Green Bank with separate categories for CNI and residential customers. In support of the authority's goal to deliver increased resilience to underserved customers, uh, residential customers will be able to receive higher incentives if they live in an underserved community or qualify as low income and targets deploying 40% of residential installations amongst these customers. Further, today's decision approves ongoing performance incentives to be administered by the EDCs, whereby customers can receive additional compensation for dispatching their systems during times of high uh, electric demand. Finally, today's decision approves various program implementation processes and guidelines and directs the program administrators to submit the final revised program rules and supporting documentation later this month to ensure a successful program launch in January of next year. If adopted, this decision would represent a crucial step in supporting the state's decarbonization goals and the authority's equitable modern grid initiative. Staff recommends approval. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you very much. Is there a motion? To move adoption. Second. Thank you. The item has been regularly moved and seconded. If there are no questions or comments, we'll take the roll. Chairman Gillette. Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reiner. Uh, the uh, decision is adopted. That concludes our regular calendar. So we will turn to our consent calendar. There are 12 items on today's consent calendar. Is there a motion? I'm Chairman, I move today's consent calendar. I second it. Thank you. The consent calendar has been regularly moved and seconded. If there are no questions or comments, we will take the roll, please. Chairman Gillette? Yes. Vice Chairman Bukowski? Yes. Commissioner Karen? Yes. Thank you. The consent calendar has been adopted. That brings us to the end of today's regular meeting agenda. Uh, we will adjourn and reconvene next Wednesday, December 15th at 10 a.m. by remote teleconference for the next regular meeting. Thank you and have a great rest of the day.